Layers are an integral part of photo editing. They allow you to remove backgrounds, duplicate objects, blend in exposure, and much, much more. In On One Photo Raw, you can easily create, duplicate, merge, mask, and blend layers together with On One's powerful masking and blending tools. Let's use Photo Raw in a quick edit to create powerful reflection and some fog in a product photo. If you enjoy the video, please hit that like button and as always, subscribe to our channel for all new editing tips and tutorials. All right, so inside of Photo Raw, we have our bottle layer here. And before we extract the bottle from the background here, the first thing I wanna do is just bring out the basic tone in the photograph. An easy way to do that is to head over to my develop tab and I'll just use AI Auto here. Now let's head over here to the left side of our screen in our tool well, and we're going to access our masking tools. In our masking tools, we're going to go up and choose this tool here, our AI Quick Mask tool, which you can also grab with W on your keyboard. With the AI Quick Mask tool, I'm going to paint in green the areas in this image that I want to keep. And then I can switch my mode up here to drop which I can also do with Shift X on my keyboard. And now I'm going to paint over the background in this red color. And I could probably use a bigger brush size, which I can modify with the bracket keys on my keyboard. And I'll head up and choose Apply. And there we go. In green, we have our bottle. And in red, we have the background. So let's head up and choose Done. So now let's head over here to our layers pane now that we've extracted the bottle from the background and let's add in a color fill layer with this icon here. And I'm just going to use this slider and I'll choose a completely black color. Let's drag that color fill layer below the bottle layer there. Now let's select that bottle layer and I'm just going to zoom in to the top part of this bottle to see if there's any areas on the mask that I need to clean up. And I think I may clean up a little bit of the halo edge around the top and this little area right there. So let's go over to our refine tools. And I'm going to head up here to this chisel tool. And I can use this chisel mask tool to chisel away at the edge of my mask. So I'll just select it. Let's choose the mode remove because we want to remove this edge around the mask we have. And let's increase the size a little bit and the 10 amount is pretty good. So let's just paint over the top of this bottle right there. We can remove that halo edge like that. Then we'll do the same thing down here. And now that I'm looking at it, this edge is looking a little haloed as well. So let's do the same thing. And I'm noticing this area at the bottom needs a bit of cleanup as well. So let's do the same thing. Let's grab our refine chisel tool. We'll do the same thing here. Just like that. And we've cleaned up the edge around the mask so that we don't have any halos or any glowing around it. So now let's just size the bottle down a bit and we'll position it in this area so that we can create a reflection at the bottom. So I'll just make sure the bottle layer is selected. I'll tap V on my keyboard. That will grab me my transform tool. With my transform tool selected, I'm just going to pull in on the corner here while holding down the shift key on my keyboard. And I'll just resize it a little bit and I'll pull it up into more of the center of the frame. And now we need to create the reflection. So I'll head over to the layers pane. I will make sure that that bottle layer is selected and I'm going to duplicate that layer with this button here. So we have our bottle copy one. Let's just double click to rename. And I'll rename it reflection. And let's hit V on the keyboard again. And let's head up to the top to a modifier bar and let's just flip that vertically. 
So then I'm just going to drag this down to where the two edges on the bottom meet up. And then I'll drag the reflection layer below the bottom layer. And once you've done that, you can always remodify the position of the reflection layer. And a great way to position it in very small increments is with the arrow keys on your keyboard. Which that looks pretty great to me. So now let's head back into the layers pane. And we're going to make sure again that we have that reflection layer selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower the opacity to a more appropriate reflection opacity. Maybe around 70 or so. So now let's use our masking bug to blend this bottom area of the reflection in with our background. So I'll just hit M on my keyboard to grab my masking bug. And I'm just going to drop this down on the scene. And I can use this big handle to move the masking bug around. I can use this smaller handle to rotate. And I can use these perforated edges here to feather. So let's feather it quite a bit. And then I'll just pull this down a bit more. Right around there, looks pretty good. So we've created a nice reflection for our bottle here. Now we can start getting creative with the scene and we can start touching up any areas that we need to. So let's first go into the layers pane and I'm going to right click on this bottom layer and I'm going to choose new stamped layer. And that's going to duplicate these three layers. It's going to merge them into one cohesive composite layer while maintaining these three layers that we were working with earlier. So if I turn these three layers off, we don't have anything, but then we can continually turn them back on if we need to readjust, or we can even bring them back in later on in the edit. So let's just rename this layer, maybe B and R, because it's our background, our bottle, and our reflection. So we'll just name it BBR, background, the bottle, and the reflection. So what we're going to do is we're going to first bring in a bit of contrast to the scene. And I'm also going to pull up on the whites. So in the develop tab, because we have this image as one sort of merged layer now, we can go into our tone and color pane. And let's just pull up on the contrast a bit. And then let's boost the whites just a hair. So now let's go into the local adjustments tab here, and I'm going to use this local adjustment layer to bring in some fog. So let's just rename this fog. And I'm gonna head down here to my paint with color option. I'll enable that. Let's use this color dropper here, and we're gonna drop it on this area of white. That really bright area of white in the corner there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head up to our brush shape menu. And we're going to go down here to a foggy brush shape. I'll include this brush shape in the description. We'll grab this one here. And what I want to do first is I want to ensure that my feathering is all the way at zero. Whenever you're using brush shapes, always ensure that the feather is at zero unless you want a really soft edge to your brush. So what I'm going to do is just increase the brush size quite a bit, probably all the way. And I'm going to brush this down at the bottom right near the reflection and the bottle. Like that. And then I'm going to rotate the brush by using shift option and the right bracket key on my keyboard. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. And then let's lower the brush size a bit. We'll rotate it again so that we maintain a unique shape sort of every time we're brushing it down. And I'll just fill in these areas at the bottom.
Now let's lower the opacity a bit, maybe down to about 40 or 35. And we'll increase the brush size again, and we're just going to fill in these areas around the bottle, again, rotating the brush, so that we get this, this little vignetting going on. So now we've created our fog. Now it's a bit strong in some of these areas in the bottle, so what I typically do in situations like this is I'll use my adjustable gradient, which is the same thing as my masking bug, but it works for your local adjustments. So let's hold down Shift and hit K on the keyboard to grab our adjustable gradient tool. And we're gonna go in here to Shape, and we're gonna choose Center, and we're just gonna drop this down. And you can see that in the center of our mask, it's removing all of that local adjustment. Well, let's use this solid line here on the edge to pull this in. And we can make it pretty small. Just going to put it pretty much on the center of the bottle. Then I'm going to use these handles here to stretch out the size of the mask. Make it a little bit smaller still. Just like that, creating this long oval shape around our bottle there. Then I'm just going to use these perforated edges here and I'm going to pull up quite a bit and that will vignette this around the bottle. And as always, if you want to tone down that fog to your personal taste, just head down here to the opacity slider and you can make it stronger or less strong. So now there's a couple of things that I wanna fix in here as far as the bottle goes. The first thing being this large white speck up here. I think we could easily just fix that. I don't think these specks are too bad of a distraction, but I think this big highlight right there could be a distraction. So let's just go into the retouch tools and we'll use our spot healing brush. And I'm just going to paint it on top of that highlight. I'll move this neighboring region around a bit and we're good to go. The next thing I wanna do is I'm going to head into this label and I'm going to use the line mask tool to create a mask and I can boost up the, the midtones in here to give this label a bit more life. And I'll also add in some detail with the dynamic contrast filter. So let's make sure that that BBR layer is selected and I'm going to go into the effects tab and let's add a filter and let's add a curves filter for the midtone boost. Now let's go to the masking options for that curves filter and let's create our mask with the line mask tool. So let's go back over to our masking tools and let's use this tool here, our line mask tool, which you can also grab with shift and P on your keyboard. And I'll just drop it down It'll create a point. I can drop down my next point. And to curve the line, I'll just go to this middle handle and I can curve it. I'll just continue on here, do the same thing for each side. And there we go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that our mode is set to paint out I know that we're painting out in this mask, but we're going to paint it out and then we can just invert it. So we'll choose paint out so that our little paint bucket has a minus sign on it. We'll select this just like that. We can choose done now. And then if we view our mask, we've created a perfect little mask around our label. But let's invert this so that the white is covering the label. Remember in masking, white reveals and black conceals. And now let's go into our curves filter and we can drop a point in our midtones and I'll just pull this up and you can see it really helps to boost up the tones in that label there. Now, a helpful tool when you're pulling up on whites is your J key. Hold down your J key to ensure that you don't pull it up too far and you get true white with that red overlay. Now let's go up, let's copy that mask that we just created with the line mask tool. Let's add another filter. 
and let's add dynamic contrast. And let's go into the masking options for dynamic contrast, and let's paste that mask. So now if we turn this off and on, it's a bit more detailed, and if we zoom out, it really makes that label pop in the scene. So let's turn these two filters off and on. And as always, if you want to tone down any of these adjustments or filters, just head into the filter and lower that opacity. So now let's add one last filter and then we can crop the image. And the one filter that I want to add just to bring in a bit of color and maybe some style is the LUTs filter. So let's add that, we'll add a filter and we'll add the LUTs filter. And one of my favorites in here is this second preset. You can see it brings in a bit of life to the scene and some, some nice color grading. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this isn't applied to our label there because I do want that label nice and white. So let's go into the masking options, paste that mask, invert it, and now that label is exactly how we want it. Now let's just lower the opacity a bit on this LUTs filter. And then I'll hit C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool. Let's use a nice one by one. And I'll hit enter and there we go. And I'll rename this original and I'll select reset layer properties so that it goes back to the original photograph. Now let's turn off our BBR layer to reveal the original, original and with the reflection and some fog. Thanks so much for watching. As always, everybody, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to see more editing tips and tutorials with On1 and On1 Photo Raw.